Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. It is part three in my resin frost grave tile series. So if you haven't watched part one and two, go check those out. I'll link them below. This would be an odd place to start. Last week, I got my resin tiles cast and mounted to MDF, and now it's time to start painting them. One thing that I forgot to mention in that episode is that before I mounted these, I washed them really well with warm soapy water and I scrubbed them with a wire brush. That was to make sure the resin was clean, to get off any residual silicone that might have broken off and got stuck in it, and the wire brush to maybe get some bubbles that I missed, but I don't think it really did too much in that sense. But it's really important to wash resin before you paint it, and of course, you don't want to wash it after you've mounted it to MDF, otherwise you'd wet your MDF and it would get wet and swell up. So I did that, forgot to mention it. Now I'm gonna paint these, and I don't know what kind of process I want to do to paint these. When it comes to brickwork or stonework, there are a few different ways you can go. You can just do a basic gray in a few shades, or you can do a mixture of different tones of beiges and reds and do a more complicated advanced stone painting technique, which I've demonstrated in the past. But for this one, I don't know. As much as I like a more detailed, varied stone painting technique, to me, the aesthetic of frost grave seems more in line with a cold, stark gray. So I'm considering just painting these in a few shades of gray with some dry brushing and some washes, but I don't know for sure yet. You guys are watching this project unfold in real time, so we'll see where it goes. Either way, I'm going to be priming them with a gray primer, a flat gray primer. Now you can prime resin with something like the Vallejo Surface Primer or the Badger Styrol in these, or however you pronounce it, and they work okay, but I found that spray primers work better for actually bonding to the resin plastic. And I've tested a bunch of different spray paints when I was earlier on prototyping dungeon doors, and I actually found that the one that worked the absolute best, that you know really bonded and doesn't scratch off very easily, is this company called Premier. Premier Primer. It's a very, well, not very, but it's a fairly cheap primer that is available at Canadian Tire. I don't know if it's um, available in the States or in Europe, but to my Canadian brothers and sisters, Canadian Tire Premier is fantastic. They got a wide selection of paints. It's kind of maybe a house brand, it's affordable. It sticks really, really well. And I found that it's also really useful on all sorts of things. It's great on plastic, on minis. I have even spray painted foam with it. And if you do it properly, it doesn't melt it. Really good stuff. Canadians, go pick some up. Americans, Europeans, South Americans, all the other parts of the world, Australia, you don't exist. Let me know if you've come across this brand. I'd be interested to know because I plan on using it a lot in the future. Yes, I am in my basement. That's where I'm gonna be painting these. You can paint, spray paint outside in the cold. It's very, very cold here still. It's still in the minus 20s, close to minus 30. If I wanted to paint one or two miniatures, I would happily go outside, spray them and bring them in and it would be fine. But I have to paint a lot. I have to paint a lot of these big tiles and they will not stay warm enough to do that. Taking them outside, they're too big. They will get cold before I'm done spraying one of them and it won't work. So I'm painting inside, which is not ideal, but a little trick that really works very well when it's very, very cold out is if you're in a basement, you open all of the windows. When the house is room temperature and outside is like minus 30, the air exchange that happens through those windows is very, very rapid. So it will take out all of the smell and fumes very quickly and it works really well. I'm gonna wear a respirator while I'm working up close to it, but you can spray paint inside if you take precautions, but you know, technically you shouldn't. So use your own judgment if you're a kid, Ask your parents, don't just start spray painting in the basement by the furnace. Not a great idea. Oh, and yeah, some of you probably will have noticed, yes, I did get a bunch more tattoo work, so it looks different than you've seen before. And you may notice me moving awkwardly because it's very, very fresh. I only sat down for a session two days ago and I have to be very careful over the next week not to bend my arm too much so I don't screw up the healing. But yeah, because I know those comments are coming. New tattoo work. Good eye. Okay, let's paint. <sighs> I 
All right, all of these are spray primed and they have dried. It's actually the very next day. And this primer has bonded really, really well, which makes me very happy. These are not gonna scratch off super easily. So now it's time to start actually painting them. And as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't sure which route I wanted to go with. Do I wanna go with a bunch of tans and beiges and various colors to give it a really dynamic look? Or do I wanna go with a true stark gray? I've been thinking a lot about it and I think I'm actually just gonna go with gray. Two reasons for this. One, there's less work. If I do these bricks in multicolors, it's gonna take ages to paint them. But more importantly, I think the idea of keeping it simple with like two shades of gray and then like a off-white dry brushing is that it's gonna be a lot easier for me to keep these consistent across all of the tiles. Those will be my official frost grave colors. And then maybe when I get into special buildings and stuff for the game, I'll do those in more of an elaborate paint scheme. So for these, I'm gonna keep them in the stark gray, cold looking style. So I'm gonna go and first do a deep gray coating over everything because this gray primer, I just did it to make painting the other grays easier. It's not actually the color I wanna go with. So you can go with this Craftsmart deep gray give everything a quick coating. And yeah, it's probably gonna take a little while to actually do this on all of them. I'm spending a lot of time over brushing these because with all the amount of effort I put into sculpting these bricks and then spray priming them, it would be a real shame to all of a sudden lose a lot of that detail by putting on a thick coat of paint that puddles up and removes all the detail. So I'm taking a lot of time and effort here to overwork this and you know brush out any excess paint and make sure that you know all the detail is preserved. Now, if you're wondering why am I doing this with a brush and not airbrushing it, well, airbrushing it would be fantastic. It would uh, go way quicker and allow me to put on a thin, dry coat. The problem is that it's very, very hard to put craft paint through an airbrush without it clogging. I've tried different recipes and all of them don't work that great and I don't wanna be messing around with that. I wanna use this craft paint. I don't wanna use you know, more expensive miniature paint that works better through an airbrush in this volume. That would be nuts. So I'm just brushing it on. Also, it would be a lot of stuff to airbrush and all that overspray without a spray booth would actually also be kind of a pain in my shop. So just gonna keep doing this the hard way. I'm officially done base coating all of my tiles. It took a little while, it's a lot of paint. I actually ended up using an entire bottle of craft paint, which is a fair bit of paint, uh, considering it's going on very thin. Just a lot of surface area to cover. Um, yeah, it's just the way it is. Now it's time to move on to the next stage of dry brushing to try to bring out some of the high points and details in this. And again, I debated it for quite some time and I decided against using any sort of tan or beige and I'm gonna stick with the very neutral gray. I'm just gonna move into a lighter gray and I'm gonna dry brush all these tiles and see how it looks. In order for this to turn out not looking, you know, kinda like sludgy paint and actually having a nice natural effect. It's really important that I get as much paint off this brush as possible and am very light-handed to start out. Now the color is going to appear quite bright, 
but the washes later are going to tone it down a lot. So I want the color, the contrast between these two grays to be very strong, but I don't want this to look like smeared paint. I want it only to hit the highest spots. And one danger when doing dry brushing over a large surface like this is creating brush patterns. You don't want to, from a distance, see streaks of the color because then it looks like somebody went across and painted it. You want it to look like all these little details are individually highlighted. So it's very important to keep a very dry brush and be very light and be mindful of how you're brushing. This brush is almost completely empty and I'm actually not even doing a passing brush stroke. I'm getting really down and pushing fairly hard and almost scrubbing. I'm using a lot of force and a lot of pressure, but with almost no paint. And this helps to avoid those brush strokes I'm talking about. It's easy to add more, but it's very difficult to take away. So when you're dry brushing, less is more. When you load up a brush and just brushed it off on the paper, you ought to be very careful when you first hit your piece. Once you've been using the brush for a while and you know that the paint has been thoroughly unloaded, then you can be a little bit more aggressive, but use caution. One down, a whole bunch more to go. One thing you might have noticed or probably didn't, so I want to point it out, is that as I was brushing this, I wanted to hit all of the high edges, but I was careful not to overdo it on the outside edges. That's another thing that takes place a lot when dry brushing things like tiles or whatever terrain that has a base. When you come in from the outside, you can create a highlight line that goes all the way around and it really makes the perimeter of the piece glow and it doesn't really look really good, especially in this case where these tiles are gonna butt up against each other. I don't wanna highlight these seams. So I was really careful to kind of work towards the edge rather than from the edge in. Now I'm gonna keep this piece here, my first piece, and this will be my reference one that I'm gonna keep as a visual aid as I do the rest so that, you know, when I'm doing a whole bunch of these, I don't sort of shift towards doing one much more intense or lighter than the other one. This will help me keep a reference point. My name is Jeremy, I'm a content creator on YouTube, and today I really screwed up. <laughs> it's every content creator's worst nightmare, especially makers on YouTube, that you will screw up a ton of footage that you cannot redo. And that's what happened today. I spent all day, over eight hours painting and filming. And tonight when I sat down to start editing, the video was going fine up until this point and I realized all of today's footage was blurry crap. I don't know how I did it. I'm usually pretty diligent, but today I guess I just was forgetting to focus. I, I don't know, maybe all that spray painting the other day in the basement fried a bunch of brain cells, or maybe it's just because I'm mentally worn out on this project. It's really hard to convey in these videos how tiring uh, and mind-numbing this project actually is. And it's kind of why I avoid big, long projects. There is just so much painting. The area of these boards, you know, I have a four by four area, actually more with the border tiles. It's, what is it? Uh, so we got, it's four by six, actually with all the border tiles, that's 24 square feet. So when I'm painting a coat, like the coat of gray, that's painting 24 square feet of surface with a one inch brush, repeated across several stages of painting. It just, it's a lot. And I don't know, anyways, footage got screwed up, so painting's done. You don't get to see the process. One thing that added a ton of extra time was after I did the first dry brushing, I realized that 
going into doing the washes that I could create a very bad problem if I hydrated this MDF with the wash over spilling. It could swell and it could warp and I didn't want that. So I begrudgingly sealed all of the MDF surface with my Black Magic Craft base coat, which is just Mod Podge and black paint. I just wanted something that would stop it from absorbing water. I could have done a spray varnish, that would have worked great, but I just didn't want to do any more spray painting in the house. And I didn't have any brush on varnish, so I used Mod Podge. It is fine for something like this. It contains varnish. It's not nearly as water soluble as PVA glue. So it works really well. I wouldn't recommend using PVA glue on MDF watered down because that in itself could cause some warping. Whole bunch more tedious painting. And then today I mixed up a big batch of my improved black wash, which I have a video up for. I personally had to look up the recipe myself today for a reminder and I made a big batch and I washed all these tiles. And you didn't get to see any of it, so I apologize for that. But they turned out really nice looking. I'm quite happy with the look. The paint job is fairly simple. It doesn't have a bunch of complicated colors. It is just a neutral, nice, cold gray. And one thing to keep in mind is that these are just the tiles. They are gonna get completely covered in terrain and buildings. So I wouldn't actually want them to be in your face with a bunch of different shades and tones. I think they are appropriate for what they are. This project is really wearing on me. Uh, I'm glad it's pretty much done. All the main tiles are done. All I really have left to do is the transition tiles, which I'm going to do next week. I'm very tempted to put pause, a pause on this and come back to it, but no, I, I'm gonna see it through in series. Next week, I'm going to build the snow hills that transition into these tiles, and then I will be done. And then I'm gonna move on to something a little bit simpler for an episode. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video despite not being able to see a large part of the build take place. If you like this video, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments section below. Of course, if you want to pick up any tools or supplies for your own builds, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store with links to all of the things that I use and recommend. Those are the things that I like and that if you want to do this, you should try using too. They are affiliate links. so. I do make a small commission on those purchases from Amazon and those funds help pay for these videos and my screw ups. The other way you can support this channel if you enjoy these videos is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. If it wasn't for the support of Patreon, this channel never would have grown to what it is today. I never would have been able to dedicate so much time to it, to develop it, to improve it, and just to keep doing it and to this day, I still wouldn't be able to keep going with it if it wasn't for Patreon. And I wouldn't have been able to make this insanely incredible milestone. Holy crap, guys. So thank you to everyone on Patreon who helped me get here. If you've been enjoying this content and these videos and you wanna help me keep making more, if you want to help me make 2019 a crazy awesome year for Black Magic Craft, Patreon is the way that you can do that because I've already, I just hit a monumental goal that I never thought would be possible. It's really incredible for me. It's also really incredible for this hobby in general. I wanna hit a million. Let's do it, why not? 100,000 seemed crazy a year ago. Let's do a million. See you again next week, guys. <laughs>